Hi, I'm Dr. Sahira Long, a pediatrician and lactation consultant in the Goldberg Center for Community Pediatric Health at Children's National Hospital. General pediatrician that sees patients from birth to 21 at the Anacostia Health Center. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of Dr. Bear Bites, where we'll be talking about breastfeeding after birth. So the first question is, what are the benefits of breastfeeding? Um, and there's tons of benefits for breastfeeding. So I'm just going to talk about the ones that we have the strongest research for and the strongest evidence for. Um, for children, the benefits of breastfeeding are first decreased risk of infections, like there's less ear infections in breastfed babies. There's less lower respiratory tract infections like pneumonia in breastfed babies. There's a decreased risk of asthma and eczema in breastfed babies, a decreased risk of type 1 and type 2 diabetes, certain childhood cancers like leukemia, obesity and overweight are also lower in children who are breastfed and as is the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. There's also benefits for the moms who breastfeed. Um, so mothers who breastfeed have a lower risk of certain cancers like breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and endometrial cancer. There's also less risk of diabetes, type 2 diabetes, that is, and rheumatoid arthritis. There's benefits for the society in terms of less recycling needs and less waste in the landfill when you breastfeed and breast milk is always ready. So nothing you have to get prepared for. Are there certain foods or drinks that will help with breastfeeding and any that we need to avoid? So this is a tricky question. Um, so while there are tons of foods that people in um, different cultures believe will help get breastfeeding or breast milk production higher, the most important thing to get your milk supply where it needs to be is feeding as regularly as possible. So you can eat all the oatmeal cookies you want, if you're not asking your body to make breast milk by breastfeeding or pumping, then it doesn't matter how much oatmeal you eat. Um, so there are certain foods that if you're doing everything else to increase your milk supply through regular feedings, then they may help. But the most important thing is to breastfeed your baby, breastfeed your baby as often as your baby wants to feed. Um, in terms of foods to avoid, of course, um, excessive alcohol intake is discouraged um, in mothers who breastfeed or people who breastfeed. Um, and you also want to just pay attention to your baby. And if you notice that certain foods make your baby more gassy, for me, that was um, tomato-based things like spaghetti and broccoli, but everything else I was able to eat. And every, every mother and baby are different. So what works for one might not work for the other. So Pay attention to your baby and determine what things you're eating that might be making them upset. Should I still breastfeed if I'm sick? Um, and this is also a good question. Most mothers don't get sick to the point that they don't feel strong enough to breastfeed. Um, so if that's the case, then the most important thing is to take care of yourself and do whatever you can to keep your milk supply going. On the flip side, if you are feeling strong enough to continue to take care of your baby, then by all means, you should breastfeed. Um, what we know is when you're sick, your body starts to try to fight off whatever it is that's causing that sickness. And the antibodies that you make to help yourself fight it off will pass into your breast milk for the most part um, and help protect your baby. So definitely, if you feel up to it, you should continue to breastfeed if you're sick. Next question is, how can friends or families get involved in the breastfeeding process? Um, this is um, a question that a lot of family and friends want to know the answer to because, you know, it's food is a way that we often, or feeding babies is a way that we often tend to bond in different communities and cultures. Um, so anything that the person who's breastfeeding, friends and families can do to help support that person is getting involved with the process. In our family, it looked like my um, husband changing my children's diaper and bringing them to me when it was time to feed so that my attention could be focused just on 
the things that he couldn't do. Um, it also looked like him spending time with our children skin to skin so that they could bond as well. So anything that you can do to bond with the child in a way that does not inf- include feeding is, is great. At what age should I stop breastfeeding my child? Um, and this is a personal decision for every breastfeeding family. Um, for the American Academy of Pediatrics, the recommendation is to breastfeed for at least 12 months and then after 12 months, as long as the mom and the baby decide, mutually decide that they want to continue. For the World Health Organization, that age is two. Um, The global age of weaning outside the United States, the age is four. So it really depends on how long mom and baby decide they want to continue. There's no age that you have to stop. So thank you so much for listening and watching this episode of Dr. Bear Bites. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the chat or reach out to my team at 202 476-6941.